This video describes control charts for monitoring the occurrence of rare events. They're new in Stack Graphics Centurion version 17. The control charts we'll see in this video are designed to monitor the rate of occurrence of rare events, events such as the occurrence of infections in a hospital. The control charts are based on the time between consecutive events. There are two types of charts we'll be looking at, a T-chart for events which are recorded in continuous time, and a G-chart for events recorded in discrete time. The statistical basis is a Weibull distribution in the case of a T-chart and a geometric distribution in the case of a G-chart. You see on this slide two data files that we'll be looking at. They both record the time at which infections occurred in a hospital. The file on the left records the event to the nearest minute, while the file on the right records only the day on which the infection occurred. You'll notice on the right that it's possible for more than one event to occur at the same time. We'll be using a t-chart for the infection times on the left and a g-chart for the date of infection on the right. I've loaded these two data files into the Stack Graphics Centurion version 17 data book. You see in tab A the infection times. You'll see in tab B the dates of infection. These are two separate data sets that we'll want to use to illustrate the t-chart and the g-chart. Let's start with the infection times in tab A. These are the times at which infections occurred recorded to the nearest minute. To chart this data, I'll go to SPC, Control Charts, Rare Events Control Charts, T-Chart. The Data Input dialog box first asks me how my data have been recorded. I can record either the time of occurrence of each event, as I did, or I could have entered the time between consecutive events. Infection time is the data. It is time of occurrence, so I'll put that in the data field and press OK. I now get to choose on the Analysis Options dialog box whether I want to perform a Phase 1 initial study or a Phase 2 control to standard. If I select initial study, the data will be used to determine the control limits. If I specify control to standard, then I need to either enter the shape and scale parameter of the Weibull distribution I want to use, or specify the upper control limit, the center line, and the con lower control limit. I'm going to start with initial study and let the data determine where the control limit should be. The next dialog box lets me choose the tables and graphs I want to see. I'll take the defaults and press OK and it will create for me a basic t-chart. If you take a close look at this t-chart, you'll see that it's plotted on the y-axis the time between events. Along the x-axis, it's plotted the observation numbers from 1 to 100. Each point represents the number of minutes between consecutive infections at this hospital. There's a center line on the chart at the average number of minutes between events, which is a little greater than 2,500. There are upper and lower control limits plotted at the equivalent of three standard deviations on either side of the center line. I say equivalent because the underlying model for the time between events is a Weibull distribution. You can see the shape and scale parameters 
of the fitted Weibull distributions at the top. The control limits are therefore plotted at the same percentiles of the Weibull distribution as you would have if you plotted plus and minus 3 sigma in the case of a normal distribution. If there were any unusual times between events, they'd be indicated on this chart by a red asterisk. An unusual time between events might be a very small time where two events were very close together, giving a point below the lower control limit, or two consecutive events far apart in time, which would put a point above the upper control limit. Standard runs rules are also being applied to look for unusual patterns in the chart, things like eight points in a row on the same side of the center line. Since there are no red asterisks on the chart, this process appears to be in a state of statistical control. That means that the rate of infection did not vary over the sampling period. I can make the chart a little fancier by pushing the right mouse button, going to Paint Options, and asking to color the zones. I'll now see a dark green zone at the equivalent of plus and minus one sigma, a lighter green zone which is plus and minus two sigma, and a yellow zone which shows me the area between two sigma and the three sigma limits. Now let's take a look at the second data set. These are infections recorded only to the nearest day. And as you can see, several times there were more than one infection on the same day. To chart this data, I'll go to SPC, Control Charts, Rare Events Charts, G Chart. Again, I have a choice of either entering the time of occurrence or the time between consecutive occurrences. The data I want to analyze is time of occurrence. It's in date of infection. Again, I have a choice between initial study and control to standard. In the case of the G chart, you'd need to enter the mean time between events corresponding to a geometric distribution. Again, I'll stick to the initial study, press OK, and take the defaults to generate a G-chart. This G-chart is very similar to the T-chart we saw before. On the Y-axis is the time between events. On the X-axis is the observation number. What's different is that the time between events is discrete. It's measured in this case in days. And as you can see, it's possible that the time between events will be zero, that two or more events would occur on the same day. The geometric distribution is used to model the time between events. And you can see across the top of the plot that the mean time between consecutive events was 3.9. You also see in event probability 0 0.201, which is the probability that the time between two events will be zero. There's a major difficulty with this chart, and that is that the lower control limit is zero. Therefore, it's impossible for any of the times between events to be below the lower control limit and therefore signal that the rate of infections has gone up. Because of that, an additional runs rule is used on G charts having to do with the number of consecutive zeros. If there are four or more consecutive zeros, a red asterisk will be placed at that location to indicate an unusual event. The occurrence of five events on the same day would have generated an out-of-control signal between time periods 56 and 60. 
The T chart and G chart add important capabilities to StatGraphics' extensive collection of statistical process control charts.